G'day, Starlo here. I'm going really old school today. I've gone back to something that caught so many brim for myself and Bushy and Slick Wright and a whole bunch of other anglers back in the early 2000s. And that was a resin head with an old squidgy flick bait on it. These are two things you can't get anymore. Luckily, I've still got a few packets of flick baits. And my son, Tom, has been printing me up some resin heads on his 3D printer. So I've just rigged one up, put some S-Factor on it, and we'll see if they work as well as they did 15 years ago. I've got a hunch they might. This combination of a flick bait and resin head works best in shallow areas or places where brim and other fish are holding quite high in the water column around structure. The little coastal creek I'm kayaking today ticks both those boxes. It's shallow and snag studded. I suspect there'll be brim on the snags, but being the end of winter, I also know that the southern black brim will be schooling up prior to spawning and possibly swimming out in the open near the surface. Oh, missed him. Oh, I saw the swirl as he accelerated towards it. High up in the water. That first missed bite confirms my suspicions. There are fish out in the middle all right, but they won't be easy. It's actually quite tricky fishing because the resin head doesn't provide a lot of casting weight, so you can't cast a long way, but you want that light entry into the water and that slow sink rate, so it's a bit of a trade-off. The perfect scenario for resin heads and flickies. Hmm. Oh, another one had to go. I'm seeing these takes just from the, the line floating on the surface and seeing the twitch in it as the flick bait's sinking. They're very cautious in this skinny water. And as the name implies, they work best if you actually flip the rod tip and make them dart. They're supposed to look like a little sick and dying bait fish. It's a very good imitation of one. Try over near the snags as well. Oh yeah, ooh, <laughs> there was one on that snag. Pinned him and dropped him. Further along the same snag. Ooh, I've got myself a wind knot. That's not going to be good. Hope that comes out. Yes, it did come out. It's not unusual to get the odd casting knot when flicking very light lures. Luckily, most of them pull out quite easily. After missing a fish on the snags, I switch my attention back to midstream where I'm still seeing the odd telltale swirl in the calm water. Some of those will be mullet, but some are also brim. The trick is to get a lure in front of them without spooking the fish. That's where the light clip of the resin head landing comes into its own. There's not much better for this task. It feels good to finally pin one, and he's actually dragging the kayak. Oh, that was just under the surface. I saw all the ripples as the, as the lure landed, and that's the nice thing about these plastics on the resin heads. They just sink very slowly, and I reckon I landed in amongst a group of brim, and one of them was all over it. Lift, but I'll do it anyway. Mm, you know. Pinned him right in the front of the nose. Nice chunky fish, not overly large, but full of fight. Well, Tom, your resin heads work. 
I'm gonna have to reread that one, I think. You're ready to go, aren't you, mate? I went on to catch a few more that afternoon too. It's a deadly technique and it's not hard to see why. But don't stress if you don't have a stash of old squidgy flick baits and a son with a 3D printer. Similar presentations are possible using any straight fluke style plastic rigged on a very light head and worked erratically. Give it a go, it's great fun. Until next time, tight lines. <laughs>